If you're wondering just how damaging a lightning strike can be, let me show you what a near striking light will do for your ham shack. Stick around. Hey, Steve here, K4SRF. If you're wondering what a near lightning strike will do to your ham shack, it, would it be just as devastating as a, a direct lightning strike? Well, no, but it can cause damage. In this case, I think I got not only a near lightning strike with one of the streamers from the uh, lightning going to the antenna itself, I did lose out of the ham shack a printer from my computer. I lost a computer and a monitor. And then ham, uh, radio-wise, I lost my ICOM 7100. I also lost uh, some coax, so I thought. But under further investigation, I decided, discovered the coax was just fine. Now, let me go ahead and show you the antenna and uh, what kind of damage it sustained. This is a view of the uh, GP9 after the strike. As you can see, the fiberglass has been split completely in half. Uh, there's no center conductor in there at all now. However, here's part of it here. And the antenna is terminated right there. So it's missing about two and a half feet of antenna itself. I got blown away into oblivion, but you can see you can see the um, darkness where the lightning hit and burned the fiberglass and burned the copper down all the way down. Uh, give you a close-up look. You can see where the bolts been completely taken out. There are two little bolt screws in there. Screws that is that combine or connect the uh, center uh, conductor. But you can see they completely uh, have been removed. Thinking I might have coax damage as well, I went ahead and bought an extra 50 feet or a new roll of uh, RG213 coax for this antenna. But I took this uh, coax, the existing coax, uh, off the antenna and tested, put a dummy load on one end and tested it. And uh, on VHF, uh, it's coming in at uh, between 1 and 1.2, nothing higher than 1.2 all the way through. And on uh, UHF, I got across the board reading of no higher than 1.3. So the coax cable seems to be good. Um, and no, no physical signs of damage to it at all. Uh, the SWR is fine. Uh, everything else looks good on it. I've checked the other uh, ratings, you know, the other resistance and stuff like that. Everything looks good across the board. So I'm probably going to go ahead and just uh, keep this cable. And I'll just keep the new cable to spare just in case. Okay, now that we've seen the damage that the antenna sustained and the fact that the coax cable seems to be in perfectly good working order, let's go ahead and put our GP9 together. Okay, I'm going to replace it with a new GP9 from Comet. Uh, this will be the third GP9 I've had since I've started using them. Not one of these uh, antennas have ever failed because of the antenna itself. Its first one was taken out with a because of a hurricane. Second one, obviously, with a lightning strike. So let me. Uh, I've I've done this in another video before, but I'm going to go ahead and just recap on this because there is a quirk to putting this thing together. Okay, this is the top uh, portion, top third of the antenna. As you can see, there's a copper wire in there that has to be pulled out with. You can use a pair of needle nose pliers. But it's got to go into, this is the center section, and I'm not pulling this all the way out yet, but it's got to go into this section here, and it's uh, secured by two uh, brass screws. Or, and uh, at the other end of this second section, moving down here, again, if you look down there, I don't know, if you can barely see it, there's another copper wire that needs to come, be pulled out. And that goes to the lower third uh, section of this antenna, which is the same type of coupler. It just uh, slips into there and is secured by two uh, brass screws. To get the uh, copper uh, wire out of the sections here, I use a pair of needle nose pliers and it's reached in there and pulled it out. Now this is the top section right here that I'm showing you. 
and it's going to be attached to the center section which is right here now as I said it goes into these into this little metal coupler right here secured by two brass bolts now the thing is when you have this out uh, uh, pulled out so you can attach that that copper core you have the same issue down here at this end but as you can see that copper core the copper uh, uh, center uh, wire is way back up in there now you may not have a pair of needle nose that will go up that far so my solution is to go ahead and once you have uh, pulled this out and what I do is I secure this uh, coupler right here with a string a long string and what I will do is I will pull or push this all the way down uh, to uh, force that wire center core to uh, push out for further and you can pull it out and then you can connect it to the bottom section right here now once that's connected you can use this string and pull this back out and then you can connect the top section that's the big the biggest complaint I've heard from these antennas it's the center section is not long enough to protrude on each end and uh, this is the easiest way I found to manage getting all three sections put together. Okay, with the aid of a long screwdriver, I was able to, at the other end of the center section here, push that center post plus the wire out far enough where I could grab it with needle nose pliers. Now, as you can see, it's out far enough, far enough, and I can go ahead and attach it to the uh, lower section of the antenna into that post and secure it with the uh, screws. Okay, as you can see, I have connected the center section copper wire with the lower section coupler. Uh, make sure you put these, if these come off, make sure you put these back on first before you connect those two. Otherwise, you're going to have to take that off, uh, uh, disconnect it, pull the wire out, and put those back on. Don't ask. Just trust me. All right, moving up to the top here. And what I'm going to do, if I can do this holding the camera, is now I can go ahead and just pull... Uh, I'm going to see if I can brace it with a foot. I'm going to pull this back through. It may take some doing because you've got to connect it down at this end down here. So let me go ahead and put the camera down and I'll show you what I've done. Okay, one, one little step I forgot about. Uh, in order to make this easier, once you get that coupled together, the wire and the coupler, go ahead and join. You don't have to screw them together, but just push together the center section and... The lower section and when doing so coming down to this end it automatically pushes out some now i pulled it some most of the time it's back in a little bit further than you want it to be but with the string you can go ahead and pull it out even further to expose the uh, screw holes and now you can attach the top section to the center section just like you did before uh, just make sure you cut off the string. I guess you could leave it on there if you want to tuck it back in there, but I just thought I'd cut it off and make it easier. As an added protection at the joints where the uh, first, the top, center, and uh, lower sections screw together, I went ahead and uh, sealed them off with electrical tape, and on top of the electrical tape, I put some uh, coax uh, tape on top of this, uh, that rubbery tape. Uh, just a better assure water uh, you know waterproofing of the uh, interior of the antenna itself well now that I've got my antenna rebuilt it's time to double check the ground for the ham shack I want to make sure it's properly grounded and bonded so let's go ahead and do that this is an aerial shot of my property thanks to Google Earth and my challenge is that my antenna is located at one end of the house whereas the utility grounding is at the other end of the house uh, my antenna actually is located right about here whereas the utility public utility is grounded right here so what I'm gonna to have to do is run uh, between 100 150 feet if not a little bit more of my 8 AWG bare copper grounding cable wire around the back of the house through a privacy fence behind some bushes through another set of privacy fences around the chimney and terminate right here. My grounding path begins here behind the stations itself, behind the desk itself, 
on this grounding block and it runs out through the conduit in the wall from the entry panel outside it's connected to another grounding block and is connected with uh, AWG 8 gauge wire going down to this uh, ground post right here. My local utility company or electric company does, runs their wires underground so therefore I don't have an exposed uh, ground rod. However the uh, wire that is connected to the copper wire that is connected to is and I've been told by the uh, power company the source of ground so if I want to attach something to that ground wire that's where I did it. So that's grounded at the utility pole and it goes down around it's got to go through a little side patio area there inside the patio area it runs next to the foundation all the way out through that gate and to the end of the house where it goes into the backyard I give it a slow curve around these angles. I don't give anything a 90 degree angle, but you can see the copper wire there around the foundation. And I've still got to lower it some more. I've still got to push it down some more where it's bowed up. But uh, I'm actually going to put another ground rod right about here. That'll be a total of three ground rods. Okay, it goes underneath the bushes. around again to it attaches to this ground rod right here and this ground rod services the mast here that the GP9 is on and as you can see it's connected with the clamp here and from there it is also runs underneath this patio area here this front porch little I mean side porch up behind the bushes behind the air conditioning unit and then terminates again at this grounding rod. Now this grounding rod serves the ham shack as you can see wire coming from the uh, box and two wires coming there so I've got it double grounded so it terminates this other grounding rod right here. Well, as you can see, the GP9 is back up in service. I'm back on the air and everything seems to be fine at this point. My SWR on both UHF and VHF are between one, uh, between one and 1.2 on VHF and one to one three, one four on UHF. So everything seems to be working properly. Well, that's the importance of having your station properly bonded and grounded electrically. Uh, as I said, it was strange that the coax is perfectly good, and that could account for the reason why the lightning arrestor was not damaged at all. Oh, and about a day or so, or probably day, two days after the uh, strike itself, uh, I found something in the front yard, in the tree in the front yard. I actually found that part of the antenna that I said was completely blown away in, earlier in the video. This is the top of the antenna. It was actually about 15 feet up in a tree. Um, I think the lightning probably hit mid stri or mid area right here because of the uh, intensity of the darkness and everything. And there doesn't seem to be any evidence of a strike on the head at all, like on the tip or anything. But I do see where the uh, uh, current did go up the center uh, copper and it kind of split here. So. That's the top part of the antenna that I could not find. I was wondering where it went. It went clear from the backyard into the front yard into a tree. Well, thanks again for watching. And if you found this information useful, consider subscribing if you haven't already and click that bell to be notified of upcoming videos. Until next time, this is Steve, Kilo 4, Sierra Romeo Foxtrot, 73.